This week is Middle Eastern week and for the next seven days I'm going to be focusing my attention on fragrances from the house of Afnan who are based out in the United Arab Emirates and are now present in over 30 countries worldwide. I'll be covering all seven men's fragrances from the brand's very popular Supremacy range as well as uh, one which has been requested a few times now by subscribers to the channel. So I'll also be uh, giving my thoughts on this one, the Cherathi Brown and letting you know how it compares to its rival Rorschach's moustache and the much less expensive penthouse Lovato as a, a clone of YSL Tuxedo. But that's all uh, later in the week and today is all about this one which is Supremacy Noir. So to find out my thoughts on this one, stay tuned to Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and thank you very much once again for tuning in to this latest episode of Mags Frags, where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. My name's Paul and today I'm uh, going to be reviewing Afnan Supremacy Noir, which came out in 2015 and it's described as a spicy amber fragrance. It's an eau de parfum concentration and it comes in a 100ml bottle size. I picked this particular one up from eBay for £32.99 but I'm sure you'd be able to shave a few quid off that if you shopped around at some online discounters. Yes, yeah, so into the presentation and I think the box looks really classy and elegant in this uh, satin black finish with embossed detailing and metallic chrome branding. On the front we've got the name of the fragrance and the house as well as the uh, size and the concentration at the bottom. There's also a large supremacy emblem and some small accents which all come in a, a raised finish. At the top is a small Afnan logo and at the bottom is all your usual product information and the barcode. I think this is really nice quality uh, but Afnan have really stepped up and raised the game in 2021 when they introduced the not only intense and the in oud uh, fragrances to the supremacy line uh, with a huge difference in the box presentation but that's something that I'll get into uh, more when I review those two later on in this week. The bottle again looks really great and feels like a, a really premium product. It's got a really nice bit of weight to it due to the metal cap and also this metal emblem on the front. Again there's the, uh, the name of the fragrance down at the bottom in chrome and then underneath there's uh, another Afnan logo which is uh, stamped into the bottom of the glass. The cap doesn't click into place uh, that snugly, um, it's not the strongest tool so I wouldn't be confident in picking it up by the cap uh, but it has got a decent enough sprayer uh, and it sprays a nice uh, fine mist and overall it's extremely good quality presentation for the uh, price that you pay. Okay so the top knots in this one are spruce, bergamot and violet. In the heart of the scent there's pine tree needles, leather and lavender and the base notes in this one are labdanum, patchouli and amber. Yeah, so this one opens up extremely green, extremely spicy and with a very fresh and herbal like quality that comes off smelling like an 80s powerhouse fragrance in the uh, ballpark of something like polo green but without smelling the same if you get what I mean. It's actually uh, a copy of Bottega Veneta Por Homme, uh, but I think this is more of an amped up and intense version of that one, although they are about 90% similar in, in terms of how they uh, actually smell. I can't understand why they've uh, called it noir though because this is about as green as you'll ever likely to get in any fragrance. The spruce, the pine tree needles and the violet produce kind of a menthol eucalyptus type freshness in the opening and right through into the uh, heart of the dry down. It's a cool crisp freshness that's like taking a walk through a forest on a cold day and just breathing in the chilly air. There's also a real spicy kick for the first hour or so but then you get some leathery touches uh, that come through along with the patchouli and labdanum so you get a masculine earthiness from the base. It never really sweetens up and it goes from uh, being green and herbal to being more like earthy and woody but always stays bright and sharp. It's a very elegant and sophisticated scent that's quite serious and powerful smelling so it's definitely going to uh, make a statement and command respect as soon as you enter a room. <laughs> 
This is one that I believe is best suited to a confident man, maybe in his 30s or 40s, and in a position of authority or power. It'd complement a nice tailored suit perfectly, because it smells crisp and sharp with a, a clean freshness. This is far from what I'd describe as a playful or seductive kind of aroma, so not really one that I'd really reach for for a night out or a date night. Um, I think it's got more like a, a seriousness about it, and it's one that commands respect, so it'd work perfectly in a professional setting where there's a big, uh, like a big deal to be done or if you're networking uh, for new business opportunities, etc. You could wear it casually outdoors in maybe the spring and autumn, but it's not quite summer fresh and it's also not warm enough to wear in the coldest of winter months either. For me this is the perfect daily work fragrance if you're looking to make a statement. It's bold but yet stylish and elegant with a really grown up and sophisticated character. It's an eau de parfum concentration and the performance is very good and it's really long lasting but it's maybe not quite as beast mode as some of the others in this line. Uh, you'll get a decent strong projection for the first couple of hours where people will definitely pick it up on you as you like enter a room and walk past them but then it settles down and stays more close to the skin with maybe an arm's length projection for the next couple of hours. By this six to seven hour mark, it's a complete skin scent, so you'll have to go directly to where you first sprayed it if you want to be able to detect it on yourself. But overall, the performance on this one is not a problem, and you probably won't need to reapply this one if you're just going to end up wearing it like as a work fragrance. Yeah, this is a really good pickup if you're into your greener, fresher scents like Creed's Green Irish Tweed or Polo Green from Ralph Lauren. But maybe um, if you're looking for something that's maybe a touch more modern and contemporary smelling. It's versatile and fairly mass appealing, uh, but like I said earlier, it does edge towards the herbal side, which might not work for some people. It's very masculine with a, a bit of a macho 80s vibe going on, but you can tell that it's more of a modern fragrance with just a nod to the, uh, to the 80s era rather than being old fashioned and out of date. I really enjoy this one, and if it's uh, worn at the right time and place, I think you're onto a winner. It's stylish and fairly unique smelling, and for around about the 30 to 35 quid mark, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's scent of the day, but don't forget I'll be back tomorrow with another one from the Supremacy lineup. So don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I up upload that one, as well as other future uploads. Also, if you've enjoyed the, uh, the content and found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. So, until next time, thank you very much once again for tuning in. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye-bye for now.